Zerg versus Zerg, we're good to go. We have our Fnatic player to the top of the map. It is Antigua Shipyard. Game number five. Here he is. Fnatic Lady Call Moon. This could be the day of potentially the fewest CVZs we've ever had in Team League. <laughs> yeah. You are you're right? You're perfectly right about it. His opponent down here at the bottom right from the team MVP. His ideas. MVP! Sniper! MVP Sniper. It's a great name. I like it. He used to go by a different ID. Uh, Didn't they all? I think actually he was the one who used to be MVP Killer, but then he knew that there was a killer in uh, Latin America who was a Zerg, and also there's Killer, the Protoss player in Korea, so I think he changed his name to Sniper as a result. I believe that's who this, his ID used to be. I, I remember there was an MVP killer on the ladder. These nicknames and just the way that the Koreans choose their nickname is something that really makes me smile every single time because it's like they don't really know English, so they, they see these names like Night Shadow Killer 66 or whatever, and they, they choose it. It's basically the nickname that you, the first nickname that you will ever pick when you start playing video games when you're like five years old. And uh, then they slowly but steadily realize what the name says, that there are like a hundred thousand of them out there, yeah. so they try to come up with a different one. And I think this is one of the reasons why we have so many nickname and uh, nick change. Then you have other players who actually just start with their real name as a nickname, and then they start to play, be a, like really competitive and uh, professional gamers, and they realize, okay, well, I actually want to have a like, real ID yeah. and not my name set up. Well, the thing is, uh, in Korea, IDs are so not valued like you just saw, you can hear in the background the Koreans put up that same MVP sniper intro the fly-in that comes in otherwise the Korean commenters will not say the word sniper one time throughout this entire broadcast they'll use his Korean name the entire time using uh, Sun Tzu afterwards which means player and they, they like that's why in Korea like people pick these ideas that seem a little bit silly too is because they know that in Korea their name is what's important yeah, but uh, right now with uh, just StarCraft being uh, more global. important on a global scale, yep. and it is more important to you that you will actually also market your ID, which is something that we see uh, happening a lot. For example, StarTail, MVP, all these teams set up Twitter accounts for all of their players. This is something that was not all that important to a lot of Koreans earlier on, but now they realize that it's really important that you get your name out there, that you work with your fans, that you have a kind of a way of inter to interact yes. with them. So that's why we have all these all these Twitter accounts for StarTail players, for MVP players, for basically every single Korean team out there. You know, a great way to find out what a player's Twitter is, by the way, is to go on Liquipedia, search the player there, and usually right under their picture, there will be a Twitter link. You can follow us on Twitter at well, as well at ProxyWolf and at Calder. Tweet at us. We currently have... Kind of very, very mirror similar. Games, yeah, yeah, we have exactly a mirror game going on with both of them executing the same build, starting with an early hatch and then now transitioning into the baning nest. You can also see in the production tab that the timings are basically identical. We have. Uh we, we have a little bit of a harvester lead right now for Sniper, but on the other hand, the Moon is about to complete his own set of drones, so then he will be even with him again. Yep. It's just coming down to the small and subtle differences in the playstyle, like for example, this one spine crawler that Moon is currently building. Uh, look at the drones, he's making more drones uh, as well right now, uh, instead of the oh, spine. The sniper is building the spine crawler, yeah. my bad. It's fine. Yeah. Everyone so can see. It will probably just go for a few defensive banelings here at first. Spine crawler now also for Moon. Very, very normal and typical. Yeah, textbook play here, and basically the, the way that this game can be decided. For example, this early speed just a second earlier means he gets by those links. Does that mean he gets into the main base? Probably not, because the spine was set up earlier. But he will actually get in. And look at this. If he had speed a second faster, I'm talking about, of course, sniper. If he had speed a second faster, he would have stopped this. But he didn't. And these little subtle things mean now that now that this happened, Sniper doesn't know what his opponent's doing. He has no clue. Totally in the dark. Doesn't know about the fast layer. He is completely uh, in the dark, wondering what his opponent is doing. He he has no way of knowing. The one thing that we are going to find out really soon is if we have one of these epic late game ZBZs once again. This is what I really like about the kind of style of play that we see recently, especially in the GSTL, we've seen so many amazing uh, Zerg versus Zerg matches, Symbol uh, against NST was one of them, but we had just so many of them. These late game uh, Zerg versus Zerg matches are just something that I really started to love a lot more. 
A couple of months ago, what you would see in every single Zerg vs. Zerg is a GG after 10 minutes. 9 minutes, 10 minutes, the game would be over. Ling bailing all the way, then the transition into a very Roach and Hydra heavy play, then the Infestor transition, and suddenly now it's about Infestors, it's Mutalus. Later on, even Ultralis can prove Lords. It's just awesome to watch, I love it. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, we see a Spire Tech's been chosen for Moon, something he likes to do a lot in this match. He's actually going to trade here with his links. Well, decides to retreat after all. But uh, the Spire Tech versus Infestation Pit, with the timing of the Infestation Pit, I think he'll actually be fine against the pressure of the Muse, but will he be able to keep his third base alive uh, as Moon is taking... Excuse me, Moon is taking a third, and I mean, this is kind of... Oh, getting a little bit greedy with that Queen, he may lose it! He oh, will. he absolutely will. Bye bye, Queen. That's huge. That's yeah, that's a lot of production. That's loss. really well done. And if you just look at how this works now, you also man you already mentioned how we have the Spire against Infestation Pit, and we already have plus one attack being built for the Roaches. So Sniper will have a composition and upgrades that will put him ahead of Moon. If Moon is really careful with the Mutalists, and he might be able to make it work. I've seen a couple of games where I actually thought that the Infestor player is definitely way ahead because he has fungal against Mutalists, but if you split your Mutalists like crazy and you have a really good micro, you can still yeah. make this work because you chase down your opponent's Infestors as soon as there are only a few of them. You kind of try to bait these fungals into small groups of Mutalists and then you swoosh in and uh, take down every single Infestor that's left. And Infestors are vulnerable, this is the one thing that we should not forget here. He's seen the Spire as well, and he's going to be able to prepare accordingly. And uh, I feel like this type of Mutalist style, where you try to go Mutalist when you and your opponent are even, is on its way out right now. I feel like the, the more clever and better Mutalist style is when you use it when you're ahead. But this, we'll see how much damage it's going to do. It's going to certainly slow this Roach push down, and he's not even going to be able to commit to this anymore. But it's going to, the Roach is kind of buy him a little bit of time, where the Mutalist kind of have to focus on them. Or else, uh, if, if the Mews don't focus on the Roaches, the Roaches will attack him, he's going to be in trouble, but it kind of slows him down for the Infestors. It triggers six Spore Crawlers, and this in itself is already worth it. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't make them yet, after he saw the Spire earlier. He's losing Banelings right now, and his Roaches are still under fire, and Moon's actually attacking with his Lings. If he can target down this Patchery, while he keeps the Roaches away with his Mutas, then he'll get way ahead. But I don't think he's going to be able to. There's too many roaches here. Nice try, though. And he's still killing overlords. And he will. He's not really supply blocking his opponent, but just look at how well he executes this. He takes down, takes down a lot more units here. And this is really well done by Moon so far. Where are the. We don't actually have any infestors out just yet. He just started to produce them. But those mutalists certainly do a good job. They take down another queen. And oh! Yeah, there it is. Yeah, but he, he loses lose. two. Yep, two mutas as a result. Not worth it. Not worth it. Well, arguably worth it. Did, did he make extra queens? Yeah, he did, so it's not worth it. Definitely not. Uh, if he didn't make extra queens, that would have been something that would have been really, really important as he lost. He would have lost the ability to inject that hatchery 100%. But right now, plus two is already on the way for Sniper. He held decently well. He's got Infestors out. He's got a better Roche position. And Moon is hard-pressed to, to get an advantage here. He's got a ton of spines that he made. That's a lot of drones lost. And right now, Sniper's not attacking him, so those spine crawlers are not useful. Moon has uh, the spore crawlers that were baited, also a lot of an investment for Sniper, and Moon is really fine here. He currently, well, he's a little bit behind in upgrades, as he already pointed out, so he's getting the armor upgrade instead of the plus two attack, but he needs to uh, think about what's his next step gonna be, because with the Mutalists alone, he will not be too happy in this game, and now we have five investors out there with a lot of fungal uh, energy, so as soon as he moves in too far with all, or too deep with all these Mutalists, he will get fungal and then be killed. But here comes the infestation pit for Moon. Uh, maybe a little bit late. Yeah, it's well, it's certainly later than his opponent, so he's going to have a much later investor count to build. The Roach count is in Moon's favor, 25 to 15, but his upgrades are worse. And his opponent's economy will allow him to catch up very quickly. The plus one carapace is on the way for Sniper as well, so he's going to be at 2-1, whereas Moon will be at 1-1 very soon. Moon is kind of waiting for this attack to happen, for Sniper to be aggressive, and he's still looking uh, for a few overlords on the map. The Infestor energy count is so high right now as well for Sniper since he's had them out for so long. So he has so many fungals available to uh -oh. him. Oh, he needs to be very, very, very careful. I like the Overseer that's always scouting yeah. a bit ahead so that he does not run into a fungal. But look at the amount of Infestor that we currently have. There are 10 of them already. And he's going to attack with them with 
So much energy, not only for Infested Terrans, but also for Fungals. And the Queens are coming so they can transfuse. He needs to get additional Overlords here. He's not building Overlords, and now he's suddenly Supply Blocked. Well, okay, he's Supply Blocked at 198 Supply, but still he's going to lose additional ones. And he needs to rebuild at least two. Yeah. Uh, and that he does are. exactly that. Two Overlords, plus two Carapace on the way for Moon, so he's going to get ahead in Carapace upgrades here. Well, this attack will ignore Carapace, and it's going to hit way before that upgrade is done. It's going to go to the third base. He's got to be careful. A better concave for Moon, but so many fumbles available. He's moving in with his Roaches, but the Roach count is currently in favor of Moon. Let's see oh, how this is going to work. Though, and he's going nice. right for the Infestors. A nice flank by Moon. The Overseer will spot for these Infestors. And he has taken Sniper's oh, wow. army out. Completely oh, wow. surrounds it. Oh, what my God. What a positioning. God. Brilliant. He sets the trap and Sniper walks right into it. The Infestors are done for. And Moon with a supply lead here. Well, a supply lead is really only marginal, but with all the upgrades that he currently has and the very high number of roaches, 25 now to 21 at MVP. Tr a sniper tries to rebuild his army, but this was really so well executed. That was like a battle plan that would have been talked about in the war room for like two weeks. That he actually just executed in seconds because he's a genius and he had his overlords in position to spot. Resources lost 2,000 additional for sniper because he lost all this gas. He lost all this in these infestas. Really, really well done. The by mutas him. are still alive for for Moon as well, so you can continue to scout with them. He's going to see his opponent's creep spread as well as catch any overlords that try to scout any overseers that get a little bit too stray out on the map. Plus two Carabas is going to be done way earlier for Moon, which will put him at, interestingly enough, 1 2, with 2 being the Carabas, whereas his opponent's going to be 2 1 the other way. Both of them are trying to get a fourth base, and those Mutalists could be used to actually scout if there's a fourth and also take it down. And he doesn't. Well, actually, now he moves down to the. Okay. Ignore what I just said, he is moving down, he's having a quick look and he sees that there's a fourth base, so now he knows he can prepare accordingly. But yeah, I really like how he's approaching this. And uh, the Infestor count right now is six Infestors, four Moon and only four for Sniper. Oh, look at this, a he's going to try to bait the Infestors back to this hatchery. What, meanwhile, he's taking control of the center of the map. Only dropping Infestor Terrence, he... Okay, that was close. He may lose Infestor if he's not really careful here. And... Mutas. He's actually completely sticking it out. I don't yeah. think I think he just wants to get rid of these units. I think so. He there is no reason why he would not be aware that the Muta lists are being yeah. attacked. A, a, another Infestor or a few more Roaches are more valuable than him. Oh, those units are so clustered up. If Moon actually gets the better concave, he runs his Infestors in, but he gets all of the units Roaches. All of those Roaches, all of them fumbled. But does he really have enough Roaches right now? It looks like he does. There's so much area of effect damage done with the funnels, and he moves in again, clustering up. And here comes, here comes Moon. He's trying to make it happen. He doesn't get another bundle, but he takes down Roach after Roach. He's moving in, and 33 additional ones being produced for Sniper. Moon is also getting additional units out there, trying to reinforce as fast as possible. Both of them with 200 supply once again, while the third base now being attacked by Moon. An epic battle, an epic Roach battle here. Yeah, Moon barely trying to push up the ramp, but he won't be able to do it. He's going to lose his investors at the third base, but his rally across the map looks quite strong. Right now, the Roach count 44 to 38 in Moon's here, but not all of his Roaches are together. He needs to kind of back up for a second, take control of this tower. Once all of his units are together, he can continue the fight. The investor count 2 to 3 right now in Sniper's favor. Wow. One of his Roaches on low health as well. They come in swinging, both of them, and they do a lot of damage with Sniper actually getting the better end of it just by a small margin, but really, really aggressive and great style that we see by both of them. Still both with four bases, trying to get additional upgrades. Sniper heading towards these upgrades for his um, Hydra list that he wants to use. An attempted snipe at the fourth, unsuccessful, and this fungal. Yeah, he pays for it with that fungal. Losing several roaches, but Moon will remax very uh -oh. quickly using oh, Infestors instead. And another! No, wow, that, that was really close. That looked like he was able to fungal again. Uh, he, he didn't did have enough have, energy. Yeah, he did not have the energy. And Moon does have the energy available on one of his Infestors. He's trying to get the concave here. Great fungal so far. Moon it's has, hard to say who's ahead here. Moon has so many roaches. He has so many roaches at this point. Plus two is about to finish for Moon, and he's going to be at 2-2 two -two versus 2-1 in just a second. But he's not just yet, and the fight is nearly over. The upgrade didn't kick in just yet. And look at this code game for Sniper. Moon is down with 30 supply. Finally, his plus two attack is done, but it's already too late. He could not use it in this fight.
Yep, Roach, uh, or rather Hydralis range, and the Hydralis then finished up for Sniper right now, so he has that up his sleeve. It's something he can use. A few changelings being laid down on the other side of the map. Looks like Sniper really wants to hit this external base, the kind of satellite base at the top right. He's and he does. Gonna, he's only going to send a few Roaches there, but they'll be enough. To That's through all these he needs. That's all he needs here. Now, he can actually get the Queen if he wants as well. He's going to catch Moon on the defense. Moon down in supply right now. He has to be very careful. Moon is ahead in upgrades now, though. He's trying to use those fungus to his advantage as well, but this battle seems to end in favor of Sniper. Sniper has, does he have enough units? He killed a fair amount of drones already and is trying to take down the economy of his opponent. Sniper with a great play here. Moon with really nice engagements as well, but now he's getting, he's actually drawing the shots draw. Yeah, he definitely has. Uh, the hatchery will be defended for now, but he had to, to bring the overseer over there. His drones are broke. He's not mining with them. A few roaches trying to sneak around and do the exact same thing to Sniper, but he's already prepared with spore spines, even making a very important spore crawler to make sure that after the, the roaches, if they burrow, uh, will be taken out. This is, uh, this is just completely shut down. Moon down 50 supply. His investor count at 5 to his opponent's 11. Roach count 36 to 28. The only thing he still has going for him is the Roach uh, upgrade advantage. He's still 2-1 versus 2-2. Two, two. Plus 2 Carapace just now being started for Sniper. Probably just forgot it. The fest account alone is already a really big problem. Yeah, for they ignore but upgrades. Yeah, but the thing is, with all the additional units that he currently that his opponent currently has, it's just he has. I actually don't know if he sneaks a couple of infests into the mineral line of his opponent, uses infests as to shut down uh, the economy of sniper. A few run bys that we currently see. That might work, but now we have Sniper setting up the defenses again. Yeah, he's only going to target the hatch, though. And he's going to lose everything. That's the problem. Yeah, that is indeed a problem, but that may be enough for him to kind of catch up with the economy, catch up with production for a little while. You can see, look at the resource at the bottom, at the top right. Sniper has a lot more bank than Moon does, but that's going to change very soon as he's going to have to use that bank as he lost this hatchery. Moon being very careful, giving up the watchtower immediately as soon as he sees this Roach Force coming out. He needs a defensive advantage. He needs the defensive concave with the Infestors to hold an attack. Sniper is on 200 supply. He's maxed out again. He's working up this oh, bank to reinforce. Yes, he will uh, seize them right now, taking a few of them down once again, trying to hit this fourth. And this is the one. Uh, this is the one very, very th uh, thin threat. Uh, Fnatic means life is anyone right now. Moon dropping a ton of Infested Terrans. So much DPS in here. He burrows his Infestors. Now tries to go in with his Roaches. The Infestors of his opponent may actually be taken out as the Infested Terrans came out first for Moon. This is a really stressful position for our MVP player, but it looks like he has enough bungles to hold. Yeah, and he reinforces and is suddenly up at 200 supply again against Moon on 100. The Kills fourth that. base is down. He's got Overseers leading the charge. Infested Terran's coming down here, and Moon will not be able to hold on much no. longer. No, he won't. Sniper, he defeated alive. He's up against Moon right now, and Moon is about to lose this game. His opponent is doubling his supply. The Infestor with a bit of a problem, but there's another Fungal saving the ass. And, well, yep. how can Moon actually take this now? What can he do? What does he have? He has se seven he's got Infestors. A better, he's, yeah, he's got a seven Infestors. His Roach count is really similar to that of his opponent. He's trying to, to sneak his way into the back of this base, which will buy him some time. In fact, Sniper's sending everything back to defend this. The key here is that Sniper has the Hydralis as well as a slightly better Roach count. He doesn't have the upgrade advantage. Well, actually, his car Carapace just finished, so he does. He needs a mineral donation in order to uh, get back into this game. Basically, yeah. Someone to give him some minerals and some... He does have the gas, but he needs the minerals. And without the fourth base against four bases, this he is He doesn't even be have the same production. It, it, yeah, he doesn't have the same production. He doesn't have the minerals to pull it off. His third, that's the only base where he's still mining from. So we are currently talking about two mining bases against one. Oh, he's distracting him with these changing. He's moving in from two sides. A great concave. He just has more units. This the hydros in the back blow. are just too much. And this is, like you said, the final blow. Moon has been taken out. Desperately these, going these for a attack. The Infestors, the, this is something that he should have done a little bit earlier. Yeah, this base is essentially mined out anyway, so if he loses it, it's not too big of a problem. Moon has not taken the base of the north, he's not retaken it, and Sniper has seen that. He's continuing his push at the natural, even upgrades with a better Roach count, even the one Hydra there in the mix. And he's gonna he's gonna clean up the force at the natural, then just turn his units around, since all those Infestors basically are useless since they spent all their energies, he's gonna go around and kill Moonin. 
Moon's at half the supply at this point, less than half. If Moon had a ton of Infestors against none, that he might still have a chance to make this use, uh, to make this work, especially uh, with the energy units in the late game. You can always try to uh, pull off some kind of glorified comeback. But now we have uh, still one mining base for Sniper. Moon is getting the last few mineral patches at his third, and this army size is just incredible. We have 132 army supply for Sniper against 48 for Moon. Yeah, this, this is, I mean, he's making only Infestors right now. He had a ton of gas banked up with no minerals. That was kind of his limiting factor. He's got up to 15 Infestors. I mean, that's what he's hoping for. It's still not going to likely work. He's going to lose these two Infestors over here. So careful right now is Sniper. Even remaking this hatchery, he knows he's only going to mine gas from it, which is kind of weird considering he has 2,000 gas there. But, you know, either way, he's just being so careful. He's going to have that production remade with that hatch. And now 100 supply up is probably just going to end this game. There's not much Moon can do to circumvent this. He can't try to go around the sides. It's all going to come down to his fungals. And, well, we'll see if he has enough. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. The energy units, it was he is hoping for now. If he gets perfect fungals, a ton of infested Terrans, maybe. But it's unlikely. But he's going to try anyway. He Here tries we go. indeed. And the Roaches, the Hydras, they are doing so much damage. Fungals going down everything. It's hard to see. But when the smoke clears, Sniper still has the better composition. And he will actually just end this game. GG. Moon is defeated. Sniper took it. And he took the third win for his team. MVP is up 3-2 against Fnatic. They've only got two players left now. Several stars already down in Oz, Alive, and Moon. They're, I think they're going to have to pull out a Bjell here. They have to pull out a Bjell. They have to, man. I don't know what else is left, really. With no Night End on the bench, Oz is gone. We may even see Ares, but I think Bjell is going to be the player of choice. I think it's good going to be Bjell and Rain as our last two players. They are not looking too happy. They certainly expected Moon to at least win one of the games. He was very confident in his ZBZ and that he could win against Sniper. And he's shown more ZBZ than any other matchup recently and he's shown good play in yes. it. The only games he's lost in ZBZ was sometimes were either due to bad luck or just his, a few simple micro mistakes. We saw him uh, losing Festers to Spinecrawlers, I believe it was on Whirlwind against a player at one time he lost. Otherwise, he just looks undefeatable, unstoppable. His build order didn't really work out against his opponent in this game and it set him behind from the start. Right now, it's a big question who is going, who's Fnatic going to choose. They are on two wins so far, but they have only two players left. So they really have to hope for some really... They have to hope for one of the players to really come through for his team now because there is still DRG and also Keen. Yeah, think of. And I think those are exactly the final two players we'll see from MVP, but we may not even see them if, if Sniper continues here. This is a really stressful position for Fnatic, and they are going to have to make their choice right now. Who will it be? And it is going to be Rain first. Rain coming off the bench. And the one thing that he is kind of... Rain is coming off the bench, and he's like, Moon, why did you pick Antigua? Yeah, that's exactly his thoughts right now. He cannot use that against his Zerg opponent. They were really taking a gamble. It was a smart gamble, but it was a gamble nonetheless putting Moon out and trying to eliminate Antigua like that. And this is actually the player that we expected to come out when Antigua was chosen as the map. So now he has to play on Entomb, which is the way that he chooses, uh, the map that he chooses. Entomb Valley is going to be the next one. And we have Sniper against Rain, another Zerg versus Terran. And if, well, if, if Rain loses here, then suddenly there's Sniper left, there's Keen left, there's DRG left. Yeah, I mean... We've seen reverse all kills, we've seen we crazy have. things, but this, uh, this, would, this would need a small miracle. Not an incredible one, but a small one. <laughs> Certainly so. The map of choice is going to be a Toon Valley. Rain coming out here, a pretty good map choice against Zerg, no matter what, uh, no matter what race you're facing. Except ZVZ, I guess the win rate there is pretty 50%. Uh, I'm curious to see what sort of style Rain is going to show us. He has shown a similar style to Alive in this matchup, but at the same time, he loves to play for the late game. He's different in, than Alive in that he doesn't like to attack early. He's much more comfortable in the late game against Zerg. We are taking a five minute break. When we get back, we'll see if Alive can pull things back for Fnatic Raid Call, because right now they're in a lot of trouble. So I'm staying like Smith. 